hanging uh, in the skies, I think, throughout throughout uh, qualifying. Uh, already when it started, when we had the delay, uh, there was already a risk that it was going to rain. So we were waiting for it all the time, and it was about you know getting clean runs, getting your runs done in time. And uh, I think at the end of the session, or at the end of uh, qualifying into quality three. We, we had done our homework from last year. You know, we wanted to be first because of the rain uh, hanging there. And uh, it paid out. So, uh, good result for the team today. Besides the fortune that you may have had because of the weather conditions and being out there at the right time, how much were you expecting that result in any case? Because it did seem in Q2 that Fernando really did have quite some pace in the car. So what do you think would have been realistic for you guys today if had the weather had played itself out normally? Yeah, I think um, when we look into I think quality two is a better representation of, of where you were. And when you look at that, uh, I think we were, it was extremely tight. You saw already in quality one, I think the, the cars were within six tenths uh, from one to 19, I think. So um, I think it was very close between us, Ferrari, maybe Mercedes. Uh, I think Red Bull and McLaren were faster. So um, yeah, and then, you know, it's uh, when, when the margins are so small, then it's about execution. Can I ask you about Sort of, it's simplistic to say, but why are you quick this weekend? Because the last two races, it's not a secret, you were struggling for pace. Fernando had some debris in the thing, and you've had a mix of updates from the last three weekends. Have you understood? Because I always think, if, to understand why you're slow, you need to understand why you're quick. And what's, what's going on here? <laughs> I knew that you were going to ask this question. Well, um, no, I think we, we, we always said, you know, coming to Texas, we wanted to take some, uh, some uh, learnings for next year. Uh, we did some new things, some uh, some changes, and uh, tried to learn as much as we could. Um, uh, in Mexico, we were, uh, or say Texas and Mexico, we were not competitive in the first place. We had also some issues. Then we saw also that uh, in Texas, in the race, we, we came back uh, quite strongly, starting from the pit lane with both. And uh, we're coming here, you know, being a sprint, we said, you know, okay, what, what's the best package we have? And uh, we, 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 dis we defined one, and then we said, okay, let's not do any experiments today and uh, execute well. So is that what the rest of the season is about? Is, you, you know, fifth place is gone, you're not going to beat McLaren this year. Is it about giving the aero department clear direction for 2024? Yeah, I, I'm not saying, I would not agree with you that everything is finished. Uh, there's still a couple of races to go, but uh, yes, at this stage, I think it's the same for every, every team. You know, you want to, the rules are staying stable. You know, everybody wants to make a step for next year. It's going to be even tighter next year uh, in terms of, you know, how, how everybody will, will come closer together. And uh, it is about doing your homework for next year at the moment, yes. Uh, go. We're, we're obviously still early on in the weekend, so let's not get ahead of ourselves too quickly. But. To be honest, to come from the result you, you guys had in Mexico, you know, retiring both cars to having a pretty decent qualifying today, how important is that for the morale of the team? Yeah, I mean, you, you touch on a very important point there. You know, uh, a triple header uh, overseas is brutal for everybody, uh, especially if you do not bring the results uh, and you have huge expectations. So uh, I think, you know, credit to everybody, you know, how everybody has stuck together over the last weeks. It was not always easy, um, but. Uh, I think it shows that you know if you stick together and you work together hard, uh, it pays off. And this is what we have done. And uh, I think it's great for the, all the team, not only the people that are here, the people that are at home. You know, everybody involved. It's just fantastic to come back a little bit. It's a relief. Quick word for Lance as well. After I mean, look, obviously it's been a, a troubled season for him. How did he deal with that? How did he deal with it? And how much of a shot in the arm is this for him, in particular, bearing in mind what he's been through this year? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you see, you, you've seen that he's. Uh, he came here, you know, was in a good, good mood, in a good state of mind. Uh, he went uh, into free practice. Uh, he was competitive, and he was competitive throughout. Uh, we, we even had to abort it, uh, to abort one run, you know, to save tyres uh, later. And uh, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, uh, the, the, with the result. Uh, he was pretty cool. Yeah, he was pretty cool about it. And uh, I have not spoken to him yet. I just saw him coming in now. Uh, we'll have the debrief. And uh, yeah, I think it's great. It's great for him, you know, uh, and it's it's also great for all the people that have criticized him so far. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your time. There we go. It's uh, only the third time this year that Lance has outqualified his teammate Fernando Alonso, but the Aston Martins ahead of the Mercedes. Here's Toto Wolff. So talk us through what happened at the end, Toto, because what we saw was, um, if you just want to come over here,